Hello everybody, my name is Chris Robertson and I'm part of a team of people who put together the Advent exhibition at Highland United Church each year. It was in 2009 that a member of staff here at Highlands United Church first broached the idea of a display of nativity sets. Having mastered the complexities of a computer program to use for cataloging, members of the congregation were invited to loan their precious sets to the church for inclusion in a display to be held on the first weekend in Advent. The idea was embraced by the members of the congregation. And so it was that a small group of five or six gathered together to set up a display in the lower hall of some 90 sets that first year. Over time, the display was joined by other activities to form the Advent Festival, enjoyed by young and old. And the number of sets loaned to us grew to almost 250, with some 30 of those now belonging to Highlands and many being purchased on trips to other parts of the world. The original group of volunteers still forms the core of those who set up the display each year, until this year, 2020. As a result of the pandemic, we had to cancel the planned exhibition at the last minute. So we are pleased to bring you this short video of a mini display of the sets belonging to just a few people. It is our hope that these depictions of the timeless story of the birth of Jesus will help to bring some joy and normality to your Christmas in a year when things are anything but normal. Enjoy. So this, this first set is a small porcelain set. Uh, in the early, late 80s, my now husband and I were living in Toronto for a few years while he finished off his education, and I was very, very homesick. So my mother packed up a care package for me and sent it to me in mid-November, including a number of items for Christmas, including this little nativity set. And when I see it, I always think of that time. This next one also has a story about my mother because this actually was her nativity set for a long time. We bought it together at a craft fair uh, many years ago and she had it in her home for a long time before she decided she was ready to pass it on to me. So now I've had it for about five years or so. We have about 15 nativity sets that are key parts of our Christmas decorations in our home. They all have significant meaning to us. Three were handmade by um, my aunt and my mom. But the one that always gets the most attention here at Highlands is the one that we bought in 2012 when we were back at our former hometown of Perth, Western Australia for a friend's wedding. It was September and I spotted this in a window thought we need this for the Highlands Nativity exhibit and it's so nice to have a reason to say we need it rather than just oh I would really like that <laughs> and so I came back the next day and purchased this very Australian nativity scene it has the five stars from the Southern Cross hanging overhead over the metal roof of the shed Mary and Joseph and the baby are koalas the kookaburras are the shepherds with little echidnas as sheep and then people are often puzzled by the three kings. The kangaroo they recognize, a few understand about the uh, platypus, but the chubby little wombat is the third fellow and often the least recognized. And for anyone with uh, young children, I would recommend a book called Wombat Divine, which tells the story of the wombat trying to be part of the Christmas pageant. And shows that there is a space for everyone. And all are welcome to worship the newborn, a gift of love to our world. So the nativity um, that I think was the earliest nativity that I ever paid attention to was the one that my mom got with her very first paycheck from Woolworths many, many years ago. So this would have been probably in the 50s. And it's a beautiful ceramic and cardboard nativity. And when you wind it up, there's a little thing to wind up, it plays Silent Night, and the three wise men go round and round. 
And I remember my mom putting it on the mantel in our house and putting angel hair all around it, which was all soft and fluffy. And we would be in awe about it every Christmas when the, the nativity went up on the mantel. I'm here to tell you today about my mother-in-law, Dawn Hunt's nativity set. This is Carrie and Ed's mom. Nana had a big TV in the center of her living room and the nativity set would go on top of it. She loved to decorate for Christmas, but this had a special place. The um, children would come up and visit Nana and every time that they would go by the nativity set, they would take this little um, fridge magnet, which was a Sheltie, and they would put it somewhere in the scene. And that used to annoy Nana to no end. So she would take the Sheltie out and put it back on the fridge, and lo and behold, the next time they came, somebody would take the Sheltie and move it. Eventually it came that the Sheltie wasn't on the fridge anymore, it stayed in the scene, and it moved from place to place, kind of like a Where's Waldo. Surprisingly, one day the Sheltie just disappeared. Uh, I guess Nana had had enough of us sort of playing with the traditional animals. But it didn't last long because amongst the dogs that she used to have and love was the Sheltie, but she also had a little Pomeranian. And we happened to find a Pomeranian Christmas tree ornament which had a halo, so that seemed the perfect thing to go and worship the baby Jesus. So instead of the Sheltie being moved around the scene, the Pomeranian started to change its place. And eventually, I think Nana just embraced the fact that anybody could come and worship baby Jesus, and so the Pomeranian and the Sheltie both featured in the nativity. This next one was bought for me by my nieces. They were looking for a Christmas gift for me, and I happened to see this at Trim's in Edgemont Village, and mentioned to my sister-in-law that I thought it would make a very fun Christmas present for me and she indeed did get the hint and pass it on to my nieces and it did magically appear. And this last one will be familiar to many here at Highlands United because I bought it last year when we had the visitors from Guatemala here at church and they had a number of nativity scenes and I purchased this one. This large white ceramic nativity set has been with my family since 1974. At that time, I purchased it as greenware as I was taking a ceramics class and I did the glazing myself. It has a lot of pieces, including three very large camels and it did have a cow. A cow with a crumpled horn that has sadly bitten the dust in the, over the years. The rest of the set is now too big for me to display, so I'm really glad to be able to put it up each year at the nativity display in the church. This wooden set was made by an elderly gentleman in Ontario. He makes five sets a year and advertises them for sale on the internet. I saw the ad and asked my daughter to send me the set for Christmas last year, which she did, and I was so excited when it arrived. It's just beautiful. Inside the box that was sent directly from the maker was a handwritten note in the writing of a very elderly gentleman, wishing me all the best. And as I opened it, a handful of little paper angels fell out all over the floor. It was just wonderful. This set depicting African people came about just a week ago. I was searching on the internet for Kitengi fabric, which is a traditional fabric from East Africa. And in my search, I came across an advertisement for this nativity set. I couldn't resist it. We didn't have anything in our collection to represent the continent of Africa. So I ordered this one and it arrived a week ago. All the figures are dressed in Kitengi fabric, which makes for a wonderful, colorful, exuberant display of the nativity according to African tradition delightful.